tape thing. Everybody's talking about it. It's a great little thing. Um, this is what it looks like. You buy it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on eBay, wherever you want to. It's a pretty cool device. Um, so what is a VNA? A VNA is a network analyzer. It's a vector network analyzer. It's a handheld little guy. Um, it was originally designed by this EDY555. I think that's a uh, like somebody's handle or something on Twitter or something. It's low cost, so it's under $100. Uh, it has a real nice display. It runs on a battery, which is really kind of cool. And it's really, really popular. Everybody loves it. Uh, there's a lot of, um, we call them uh, groups on uh, Google groups, whatever, that has a lot of this stuff on it. And it originally was started like in uh, 19, uh, 2019 when this thing first came out. It's kind of cool. So, you know, what is this thing used for anyway? So it's used for uh, basically what I use it for is for SWR. You can uh, check transmission cables to evaluate your transmission lines. Uh, a lot of people use it for antenna evaluations, which we'll, we'll try here with, um, with Wendy's antenna. And you can turn and determine the value of inductors and other things traps, things like that. We'll show you that too. Uh, so the VNA actually, what it does is it contains a source or when I call a source, I mean a, a, a small little transmitter that transmits on a certain frequency and then looks for a return coming back, just like you would with a, with a normal receiver. And uh, they call that the, the uh, device under test. So what are you gonna do with it? Uh, Alan, you had a question? Can you tell us what the VNA stands for? Network network. Network. That's the whole key to this thing. Vector network analyzer. That's the network uh, network vector network analyzer. Okay, all right. Okay. Here's some basics to it right here. Uh, it measures the reflection uh, uh, and the transmission behaviors of the uh, device under test. It also has an S1, uh, S11, and um, S21. This is basically what it looks like. It's got a port one, port two, and then you get a device under test. Typically, what I use is I only use a device under test under port one, which means I'm not using it for like a filter or any type of other device. So I only, I only need to connect one end of it. Right? And there is an optional PC, which we'll show you. You can hook up a PC to it and get a lot more data than actually within the within the device itself. Okay. This is the uh, block diagram of this guy. Um, as you can see, you got your source coming in here. It's going to go out through the test. It's going to look for reflection coming back, and then it comes back in, and it gets measured, and it gets measured. This is kind of like a little diagram of what's actually in this guy. Frequency range. Frequency range on these vary from anywhere from 50 kilohertz to uh, 1.5 gigs. Uh, the particular one I have here is set at, I believe, at what, 900 megs. So you can get different ones. Here's a schematic of it. Not a lot to it. There's only probably about three or four chips on it. Um, Mostly for the people on there who probably can't see that. But if we had a really nice TV set, we probably could. <laughs> <laughs> what are they using to uh, generate the RF signal? What, what's the chips that they're using for that? Are they just building their own oscillator? Yeah, just an oscillator. Probably listed on there. Somewhere. I don't know. It's listed on here somewhere. I didn't want to do that to you, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you did. No, you're, I asking, didn't even know. you're just asking hard pressed. No. I mean, um, the VNA, when you get it yourself, okay, this is what it looks like. I guess you guys can see it right here, right there. That's what it looks like. But actually, it comes with 
SMA connectors, which are really a pain in the ass if you ask me. So what I did was I went and I got some SMA to BNC connectors. And I mounted those on there. Because the problem you have with the SMA connectors is they're so small and you have to convert it over to another connector. Why not just put it on something that's stable? Now you can get these and you can also get a SMA to coax connector, which kind of looks like uh... there we go. This little guy, he looks like a uh, it's an SMA to RS or uh, SO239. Mm -hmm. So you can do it that way too. I do it with the uh, I do it with the um, B and C because it's a lot easier to turn off and off. I would recommend doing that if you get one of these because it's easier. You can flip it on, flip it off a lot quicker than you can unscrewing the thing. I just like it a lot better. Like a question. No, I, I use pigtails because I used to do that. I actually broke one of those off. I have an SO239 connected directly to the SMA. And you broke it off? Yeah, it was. And you probably soldered junk from it. I'm on, my, I'm on number three now. On number yeah. three? Yeah. We'll get to that. You'll <laughs> see. You'll see. We're we'll yeah, yeah. not very robust in yeah. No, that's no, why I'm not big tail because yeah. it'd, it'd, it'd be a little more sure. strengthy. So now on on um, on um, the internet, I did see a guy who put one of these together, and then what he did was he had a small little device off to the side, which was his connections. And he put SO239 on, on two little small little pieces and then had that connect up to his, uh, to his V and A. And then that way it kept all the stress off. Okay. Um, the other thing that's important too is you have these little tiny guys, which are called the uh, source, the load and an open connection. These are used to calibrate this unit with, and they come with it. And unfortunately, uh, they're SMAs also. So what I did was I created my own. I just made a regular uh, BNC and I shorted it out on the inside and made my own. And then I have a 50 ohm load that I got at a hand fest one time and I used that. Okay, so that's what I use for this. And that's your standard lines right here. Uh, this is what the top of the unit looks like. So you have uh, a C type USB connector at the top. It's used to charge it also. Uh, you got a power indicator, you have a battery indicator, and then you have your multifunction switch button. It allows you to switch to different functions on it. And this is what it looks like when you have it turned on. It's kind of nice looking. So the first thing you got to do on this guy is you got to calibrate. Typically, the the real high priced VNAs they're uh, they're set up and they're ready to go and they don't need a lot of calibration. To it. This particular unit you got to calibrate. So we have our source, our open, our load, and our our load and our through line, which we call this load and the slot. Slot. Yeah. SLOT, so it's the source, the load. You can do a through and an open. Okay. And you always want to calibrate it to the frequency that you're going to be using. A lot of people say, ah, oh, you don't need to do that. I've found that, that if you're going to resonate something on 20 meters, calibrate it for 20 meters. If you're going to run it uh, like a tri bander, Calibrate it for just a little bit lower than the frequency that the tri is on and a little bit higher than the frequency of the tri So if you wanted to use one for a tri on 2015 and 10, you'd probably be 12 to 19 meds would probably be fine. Okay. So you start out, you hit the stimulus button, then the uh, put in the frequency, the start frequency, the end frequency. So in this case, it was 12 megahertz. And the stop frequency was 29 megahertz. And you tell it to calibrate. And then it'll come back and click up and say, 
um, put in your open connection, put in your short connection, put in your load connection, and then there'll be one to say, save your connection, save your uh, values that you have. And that'll store it into the um, ROM that's inside the unit itself, okay? This is what it looks like. This is exactly what um, I did the other night, a couple nights ago. This is a, a G5 RV that runs from 33.5 megs, 80 meters, all the way to 30 megs, it's supposed to be 10 meters. And this is what the waveform looks like on this small little guy, okay? So is that the entire span line from, that you're showing here from like 3.5 to 30? Yeah, you're getting this, the resonant points are the dips. Those are the dips. This okay. is a, this so that, is that's, that's VSWR versus frequency. Is yep. that what that uh, yep. graph is? Yeah, mm -hmm. this this scale here is um, SWR on the on the y-axis, and then on the x-axis is the frequency. Okay, so you, your dips there, and you can see right there that it's the most resonant right now. I moved a little marker right there. It's resonate the best at 19.92, which is really within the handbag. Outside the handbag. Outside the handbag. Right. What I did was I moved the, the marker to, to the left and came up to, four, to 20 meters. Okay, so it came up to 14040, which is in the middle of the uh, 20 meter CW band. And you can tell right here, it tells you right here, it's 3.4667 is the. SWR at that frequency. So the nice thing about this is you don't need a transmitter, you don't need a receiver. You can automatically just put the thing up there and say, you know what, this is my SWR. I don't need to plug in a radio yet, which is really nice. That particular one, I think um, 3.4 probably would be able to get on a regular radio that has an auto tuner on it, probably be okay. This particular one here, uh, is 21.010, which is down in the extra band of the 20 meter band or the uh, 15 meter band. That particular one, as you can see, the the light in number one right here. I don't know if the guys on the on the thing can see me there, but you can see right there. That's where it is, right there. And that one is at 4.3 on the SWR. So you could say, hey, you know what? I, I could approximate what my SWR is. Like just like a just like a spectrum analyzer, what's your minimal uh, resolution bandwidth that you can put in? Like, if you want to really look at a, a small, I don't know if you get to it or not your presentation. If you are, I just wait. But uh, here, here you have the whole entire HF band, uh, all, except for the one sixty meters. But could you just look at like three point five to three point seven megahertz on this? Yes, you can. And I hope we'll get into for, for the of the Yeah, we'll get into that. Okay, I'll show you a little bit different. So we'll talk about the pros and cons of this little guy. Uh, the pros are, or the cons, I should say, are uh, it's a difficult hard to read. That thing is really small. I mean, you, you look at this and you say, "Holy cow!" This is like a two and a half inch, maybe display. It's extremely difficult to read. Especially in strong uh, summer. I don't know if you remember, Alan, uh, when we went out to a uh, Bill's K3 NON. What's this called now? RB. K3 RB. Uh, when we did field day there at his place remote, I took this out and it was extremely difficult to read on the field because of the light was really strong. One of the other things that they give you is they give you this guitar pick stylus. And it's it basically is just a guitar stick. stick. And uh, you got one? Yeah, that, that's it right there. She's got one right there. So it, it's um, kind of like, uh, like a guitar pick. That's what it should be used for is a guitar pick, not for this thing. Well, that might be with both. I have a straight one too. I have a defensive kind. You got a straight one? Yeah. Okay, good. By the way, they do make a four inch version. It's about 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you that. Um, not too mechanically stable. Right? <laughs> I had my mine, I was worried about two or three weeks ago 
I had mine out and I was messing around with it. And I dropped it, Oops. moved it over on the side over like that. And it didn't quit working and I'm going, oh shit. Can I order one and get one in quick enough for this meeting? Or do I have to ask somebody for one? So I took it all apart, put it back together and found out that these things are not really mechanically that great. So they're not mechanically stable. That way. The other thing is, uh, is what I mentioned earlier was the S, the SMA connectors or this I A, which I think we all know is a pain in the ass. It's just a pain in the ass, those connectors. I don't like them at all. I never did it, but a lot of stuff has got that. Like, and right. the only reason why I probably did it, Mike, obviously, that was cost, but it's also saying to get up into those higher bands. You know, the SMA yeah. Right. That's the yep. only reason. It's right. the only reason. Yeah. HF, you don't need it. BHF, maybe. Eh, close. Yeah. All right. So, what are the pros to this thing? The pros are compared to other units, it's a steel making it a disposable device. I call it a disposable device. If I take this unit and I, I get pissed off at somebody and I throw it up against the wall, I'm out 30 bucks. That's like three beers at the bar. <laughs> That's nothing, okay? What bar do you Yeah. Put it in the pile. The yeah. Hey, we'll have to research yeah. that. So if, you look, so if you look down here, you have one, you got one for 59 bucks, you got one for 49 bucks, you got one, which is a, uh, a larger one, which they call the H4, which has a large screen, larger screen. It's like a three to a four inch screen. It's uh, 98 bucks. But if you look at the latest stuff on DX engineering, you got you got the um, what they call the rig expert. That's which what I have. Is, yeah, it's 429 well, bucks. I didn't say that. That's what you 329, and there's another one for almost 1200 dollars Yeah. That's a shitload of money. It is. I could buy a lot of these little guys <laughs> for the price of that. You could hand them out to the club. Everyone in the club. <laughs> yeah, we could do it. You know? It's like what we did with that HD last year. Remember? <laughs> We could do we could do that, you know. The other thing that's nice about it, it's got a USB charging cord. Remember, I said there's a USB C on it, so you can you can charge it that way. The size makes it makes it really nice for POTA and for field day. Mm -hmm. So if you have a POTA operation and you say, ah oh, man, you have to tune this thing and set it all up, you could set it prior up to it, you could set it up right away, bingo, bam, away you go. There's a lot of YouTube uh, information on this and a lot of users groups that use it. So I would really take a look at that stuff. And then the main thing is there's an external software package made by another company that will interface with this and provide a lot more information than your normal DNA. So, okay. I don't want to throw cold water in the whole thing. I just want to ask a question. Um, being that you've already stated it's fragile, being that you've already stated it's difficult to read in daylight, being that you also said that you have to use a multitude of adapters depending on what you're going to actually connect this thing to. And the bottom line is, wouldn't it be possibly better if you're out in the field to get something like an MFJ-259 which is set up for the hand band to do that with, but doesn't give you the vector, you know, the display. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of understanding this because with the MFJ, I can dial that thing up to a frequency and it'll tell me the cadence of SWR right there. I don't have to interpolate anything, I just look. It. And I can even go back and forth and swish across and I can look for that dip. If you see what I'm saying, right? It's a, it's a, uh, you're no, I will admit it's a hell of a lot bigger and it costs a hell of a lot more. So, you're talking about the one with the two meters or the one meter that's on there versus well, the one digital? Two one. Meters. Yeah. It has a digital readout for your frequency, yeah, then it has two meters one for SWR, the other one, the other one's the Yeah, you could, you could do that. That's okay. there's no problem with that. I mean, this is just a, a cheap alternative that is real popular, right? okay? I, I was just wondering because you know. I see where, yeah, I mean, you got a lot of advantages to having that, especially if you're tinkering around in, in the in the shack or something. It's just like you said, you took it out and you dropped it. It's like, oh my God, now what? You know? Right. Yeah. You know? I think there's a, there's a better business case where 
Um, and you're, when you're set, it, it comes out of convenience, but when you look at something like this, it not only covers the HF band, but it covers the VHF band and the UHF mm -hmm. band, and even now the 1.2 gig band. And so, you know, to own one of those, the one for each like that, the amount of money, you know, money is phenomenal. I mean, like I can't even afford a UF, VHF, UHF uh, uh, analyzer. So this would be a great alternative. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm not throwing cold water on it. No, no, no. But I'm I mean, it's each his own, right? Like, if you no, like to do it that asking. way, right? Some people like that. Way. Well, I know. The reason I'm asking, like you said about paying out the code, though. Okay. Right now, I'm almost looking for a dip. Where, where's the antenna resin? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And if I can do that quick and dirty with the MFJ, you know, versus having to calibrate and all this other stuff, you follow what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. Bam, I'm on. I'm ready to go. You know, let's start operating. How much does the right. MFJ cost? Last time I saw it, about $350. This was nowhere near. I know. I know that up front. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you'll see some other things. The third party software has, and then probably probably makes sense. Okay, fine. Okay. I don't know if you guys are like me, but when I got into ham radio, I didn't have, and I was nowhere near $350 for a piece of touch to Right. A new ham is struggling to come up with it. The thirty dollars for a bow fang. So, right. Yeah. 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 It uses the Python programming language, um, and the source code is available for uh, for you to, to tweak on if you want to. It's a lot like Linux, so you can go in and make changes uh, to what you want if you wanted to do it that way, and then give them feedback on what you've done. Uh, the other thing is it works on Mac, it'll work on Windows, and it'll also work on Linux. Now I've loaded it on Windows, and I've had a few issues with Linux, but I've got it to finally work on there. I haven't done it on the Mac yet. Yeah. So, but but it'll work on all three of those. I've had people tell me that. So you can go to it, it's nanovna.com, and then you can just go to the nano VNA. There's a couple other programs that are in there, but the one that seems to be the most popular is the nano VNA safe, which is really nice. So this is basically what a uh, a rubber ducky looks like on this guy. This is a Bayfung Bay rubber ducky. We got this radio right here. So it's this guy right here. I took him out, plugged him into this guy, and said, you know what? Let's take a look and see what this guy looks like. And you'll see it. It looks pretty interesting. It's got two dips. None of them are really within the great Range that you need in that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it works better on 450 than it does on two meters. That's what it's showing there, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, everybody knows the original. This is what it looks like on the VNA saver. Okay. It actually tells you right here at that frequency, which is uh, which is hard to read here, 140, uh, 140 seven or whatever, it's 4.5 to one for the SW. Wow. On this guy right here. It was a what? 1.5, 4.5 to one. Wow. On, on, um, on the other frequency, uh, 446 megacycles, it was at 1.65. So it works really well on UHF. Maybe this is why I could hit the UHF repeater at the luncheon. Did you notice it could change a lot whether your hand was near it? Was it <laughs> yes, what I did was I took it actually, these red measurements are with it laying on a, like this. Okay. And we can we can we can test that if you'd like. You can hold it up this way and you can hold it horizontally and it will change. Yeah. It does change. That's why I have an external mic for my bio tank, so that way I'm holding my radio out here while I'm talking here. And then there's, there's people on YouTube. That, there's people on YouTube that no, swear no. that if you put a counterpoise on your antenna, 
that will work better. So, how much do you want to do? How long? How long do you get to make it? You know? But the nice thing about this software is that it, it allows you to, to put points in it. It also allows you to graph it, change the color on the graph, all sorts of stuff. Really, really nice. Does it cost anything for this nano VNA? The nano VNA software is uh, public domain. It's free. So it's free. And, where did, and where did you get it? It's on uh, right here. The website, right? Nano VNA. Right there. Nano VNA. Oh, it's on their com. Saver. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Open source. Didn't know that. You can actually start studying these Smith charts. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I, it, it's on here. The Smith chart is on here. Smith chart is on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other thing that I did was, um, which I thought was interesting, was I also made it into a, a dip meter. Oh, that's cool. cool. Stiffer probe. Yeah. Stiffer probe. Yeah. That's cool. Which is cool. And basically, it's just a little piece of wire. I'll pass this around. It's just a piece of wire with a uh, BNC on the end of it. Which is kind of cool. And I put that up against a coil. And when I used it, basically the reason I did it was because there was a project that we were working on for the, for the VA. The, the VA needed uh, an antenna to stand. Yeah, for their HF. For their HF radio. Okay. And their frequencies were out of band from ours. And they needed to do at least two frequencies. So we came up with this dipole with coils on it that I got here with me and we can show you that. And uh, what we did was we took that and hooked it up with this guy here to tell us where the, where they were frequency, where it was resonant. We didn't care whether or not what the Q was, we didn't care what X of the X of L, X of R was. We just wanted to know where that thing was resonant. This told us where it was, which was really nice. So that's one of the other things you can do with it. The other thing that's really cool is you can do coax length. And we'll do that with the coax length here. We can show that right here. This here is part of uh, part of the VNA software, the uh, VNA Saber software. It'll actually come up and tell you how long the cable is. It'll tell you in meters, and it'll also tell you in feet, in inches, how long that cable is. How do you terminate? Open, right? You can leave it open yeah. or you can leave it terminated. Yeah. So it's like a TDR. Yeah, yeah it's a TDR. Yeah. Type of For the benefit of our new ham in the back of the room, would you explain to him what that meant? The TDR? The, the open or the terminal. Yeah. So you have a cable that goes on the end, okay? and you have a waveform that goes down through the end. And when it goes to the very end of that cable, it doesn't know what to do because it hits the end and it reflects back. And that's what you're reading in the back, coming back the other way. So it takes the difference between the two and says, oh, you know what? This is what, what's, what's happening on this cable. And if you know the frequency that it is and you know how long it takes it for it to come back and forth, you can tell how long the cable is. And the velocity. It's the basic principle of time and uh, frequency. The TV time domain, I forget what the last three like. The time, goes, time, time domain reflects time. Yeah. Now, is that like my screens that's in the VNA, or is that just when you're using the software? This is the uh, time, this is in the software. In the software. This, this screen right here. <laughs> What's the purpose of a dip probe? That's to find the resonant frequency of a tuning circuit or coil. So, so you're you're detecting the RF from something that's radiated? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you're seeing it coming into it like a and coming back. It's like a truck. So it's an antenna, basically. It is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For these coils that I had, like this one here, and why not? It's able to be used out of the uh, at the the site when we were at the uh, Brandon Wine Springs. Brandon Wine Springs. Yeah. Right. These and the reason it didn't resonate on twenty meters was because it was set way higher than way higher in the band. That's why, because these coils were tuned That's to a different frequency. I probably just have one thing. 
PDR for you guys. So I have a question. Oh, oh, behind. So can you um mean it's a two port vector DNA? Could I actually take a band pass filter running through the port and actually run run you know span you know use it run a frequency across it to see where the uh the tips are? Yes. You could. I don't have that type of setup, but you can yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, you can do it through the uh, S uh, the twenty one. You know, I got why it's spectrum analyzed. I am not done one, but you can. There are people that have done filters. Fifty bucks. Sort of a similar question. Is there a fool around to do duplexes with that? No, I haven't. I'm assuming you probably could. Here, so. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey guys. Using the same form factor, it's very similar. Yeah, what they call the SA spectrum analyzer, nano SA. Yeah, we'll have one of those. So, in other words, so what you're saying is buy one and then bring it in and have the slides. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. March. We got March figured out. That's yeah. <laughs> What's happening, March? <laughs> All right, let me get my cable hooked up here. What have we got here? No, I think I'm good. I'm gonna find the right camera. Yeah, this is tipped it. Looks like you're still here. Yeah. Stand by, guys, online. Hold on. Hey, Mike. <laughs> online is kind of busy. What do you mean? Looking for my. Uh, I had a cable here. It was a. Um, USB to uh, USB C. This one right here? Yeah. Uh, that one there. Trent, Trent wants to come uh, That's where'd you find it? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> like when there's hey, people right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, on the DNA? A long time. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. Now, there was a time when they had these things hooked up. And they were selling them without the batteries. But I don't know. I have never seen one anymore without batteries. Well, it's got an internal battery, mine. Yeah. 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 Before they were selling them without the battery. So you had to you had to supply oh, that batteries. MFJ analyzer really needs batteries. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. This guy would I would say would probably run a day or so at least. Not that long. Thank you. Okay, so let's see here now. So if I stop sharing and I go back to this guy here, he stopped sharing. I stopped sharing. When you get set up, when you're when you're down to your DNA, does that have an external jack for power? It should stop it. Yeah. No, it's just it's just for battery uh, USB. Oh, okay. it charges by USB. So, so it's only one all the USB. Yeah. So do that and then. Oh, it's not this. Okay. And then I just plug it into. Um, I don't think I don't use the 
Okay, what do you see now? Yeah. screen? I've seen uh, what looks like you a, see uh, the VNA program screen. VNA screen. Yep. The VNA saber screen, to be exact. Okay, so you guys on you guys on uh, online, can you see that screen there? Yes. You guys online, can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, you got enough thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. Bye, guys. All right. Hey, Sirens! Yeah. Sign job! Sign job. All right. So, so here's the VNA software, the uh, the VNA Saber software. Um, it's really simple uh, on Windows, which most people run. Um, it's one executable. And what it'll do is it'll come down here and it'll automatically tell you which one you're hooked up to. Down here, it tells me that I'm hooked up to COM8, which is COM8 assigned to that USB port. Uh, if it doesn't, there's a rescan button right here, um, right there. And then there's a button called connect. Okay, and then it'll connect. And what it'll do is it will go in and it'll scan to see what, what's on there. So right now we have hooked up, I believe, your antenna, right? Yes. Yeah. We have her antenna hooked up. And we are an antenna. What's our antenna here? Number one. For those of us who can't see, what is the antenna? Oh. External two. So we're hooked up to number one. And we're... Um, Sitting right there. So, what is this antenna tuned to? What frequency? I put it at 40 it's, meters. It should, it should be like 21.4. <laughs> yeah, tell her. Yeah. What are you really asking her for? Okay. That's why we want to talk about So, what is it? We're going to measure it. Well, yeah. All right, now, wait a minute. Time out. Okay, he brings up the This difference. is a rough but crowd. The way that this antenna is set up is I have a. I have a. Uh, the octave, uh, whatever he's going to call this thing here, a, a, a graph, you know, the graph that to shows where. So I, when I did it, I set it up to be approximately 7.4, 7.5. So let's see how accurate that is compared to what well, he's saying. That's when you have radials connected. Right, I don't have the radials, have the radials and he did not want that. You it's going to be a really it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Oh, that coax is too. So, so what's the first thing that I said when you hook this thing up? You got to calibrate. You got to calibrate this thing. Unfortunately, on this software, they give you a calibration screen. Right down here in the corner, it says calibration. So you click the calibration screen, and bingo, it tells you right there it's uncalibrated. Okay, and then there's a little thing that says calibration assistant. So you click that and it tells you some stuff here and it says what? It says um, calibration assistant will help you create calibration, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then you hit okay. And then it tells you to put a short in line with it. Fortunately, what I have done is, where's my bag? Oh, it's over here. I have this little guy here that I put together, which is just a BNC with a short on it. And I took him and I'm going to put him on the VNA. Set him in here. 
now he's short. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. All right. And now it's going to come up and tell me, oh, I need, um, I need a, I need an open. I need an open. So I'm going to take this guy off. I don't know, Joe. I think your idea is better. Just get a meter or just spin the dial. Okay. <laughs> no hack on winers, winers. I went up there. No hack on <laughs> Wait a minute. No comments from the peanut gallery. That's right. <laughs> All right. So now I have. A, I now I have a open. Bit. I don't have anything plugged in. There. Actually, they give you a little tiny connector that's just got nothing on it. <laughs> but I, I do it in there. I just put nothing. Okay. All right. Then they come up and they say, you need a 50 ohm load. So I have this 50 ohm load. I got a couple of them. And I said, you know what? These are pretty cool. They're pretty common, BNCs. So I go ahead and I put that guy on there. Anybody needs one, let me know. I got a whole bag full of them. Yeah. So it's a 50 ohm BNC load. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next time. Right. 10 based to the teeth. Okay, so now it comes up and it says, "Okay, you're done with the calibration. Do you want to do you want to calibrate the second port? We're not going to use the second port, so we're just going to say no or uh, accept." Okay, now we're set. Now, if you take a look up here, it tells you that it's calibrated here for this, so we're set to go. Okay. So it didn't really check the fact that they calibrated. No, it's just assuming, but I'll show something here in a minute. You, you can okay. save eventually, but sometimes if it doesn't, I always recalibrate every time. Yeah, this is it doesn't take long. It, it really, a couple minutes you can go. All right, so now, so now I'm set. And that's the reason why you use BNC connectors, because it only takes a few seconds, a few minutes to calibrate this thing. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there with the SMA unscrewing it, screwing it back in, going, oh shit, what's going on? Yeah, and then, <laughs> so why why would they spend an extra few bucks and put, put in a switch that's open, closed, and a 50 ohm terminator in it? Because of you have to watch. Uh, it's money, it's money. money. Chinese don't know how to do that. <laughs> Who's the peanut gallery here? <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm going to go ahead and and you can do sweeps, uh, sweeps through the frequency one time. I'm going to have it go through ten times because I want lots of data, and I'll show you why. Let me show you here. Oops. What range are we speaking We are. Oh, good point. We're calibrating right now between 12 and 29 megahertz. That's what was on there. Nobody asked. Who asked that question? Mitch? Mitch did. Yeah, nobody asked that question. Well, what, what do you calibrate it to? Right. This one is 12 through 29 megahertz. Okay. Well, why, why would you do that when you get it not? Because nobody asked me. You might have to recalibrate. You forgot. Okay, so here we go. Here's our calibration and here's our frequency. We're going through 12 meters. Okay, so at this case right now, it looks like we got a dip right here. This guy right here. Mike, as you're doing that, uh, keep, keep doing it. But what you're doing, can you set markers on this? Yes, well, you, you can, can set markers. Set on that one. Yep, Perfect. you can set markers on it. And that, that's, that's what you're doing now. That's what I'm doing right now. Gotcha. Cool. So right now it's saying that it's 17, it's 17.1725 17 megahertz. The uh, SWR is at 5.4. It's actually 80 at 12 megahertz. 80.1742, which is correct because she says it's for seven meg, right? All right. So let's go to seven megs. Now, who was asking the question about can you can you uh, minimize the that was wrong? Okay. So let's go to six, let's go six to eight megahertz. Okay. 
So we'll go with six. Oops. And we'll put. Just as a point of order while he's setting it up. So when I went out to Colorado and I knew I was only going to work on 40 meters, I set my start end points for just a little bit below and just a little bit above. That way I was not looking at some bunch of nonsense, you know, and it was a much more narrow focus. Okay, guys on guys online, can you see that where I changed that up here? It's eight megahertz and six megahertz. Okay. Yeah, we see. So now we're going to do yep. a sweep of that. We're going to do 10 sweeps. And we're going to take a look and see what this thing does. Wow. 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 Just outside, man. Okay, so we're going to move it over here like this. How do I get rid of these guys? You've got all these people on the way there. Minimize, make a little minus. Yeah, Okay, so here's our guy right here. So this is going to tell us that our best spot on this antenna right now is about right there. And I go back into show data. It's at uh, 7.35. And the SWR is 1.2. Short short no, and I, no, I told him that I set it at around 7.4. 7.4. Okay, so that's what it's reading there without radius. And, and what, what, what's the SWR like? Uh, the SWR there is 1.2. 1.2. That, that sells it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the thing about this unit, which is really nice. What you can do is I have a matchbox. So now I can go out and figure out, I can turn that matchbox to make this thing work. The problem you have with this little guy, I don't know, you can't really see it on the, t on the screen because it's got all the data going through there. You can't really tell much with it because it's so small. You can change the, the settings on it and it's really, really difficult to see. The resolution is really bad. Change the color of the traces. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you can change the color, but not. It, it, there's only like three colors. There's a guy who put out a really nice uh, simplified YouTube on this and he tells you, don't worry about all the rest of the crazy stuff like the Smith chart and everything. He, he narrowed it down to just, it was pretty much, you know, nano VNA for dummies. You know, it, yeah. it, it resonated with me it got me doing what I needed to do. And it was just the real basics. And if anybody wants that, I can send that out, that link to an email. Yeah, and you're email. just turning off the extra screens. Yeah, turning off the extra yeah. screens and actually narrowing down your grid square. So that way, if you don't have the luxury of ha having your laptop with you, you know, uh, with the program on here, but I'll tell you, this program is going to be game changer. Yeah. So, so when you were out in the actual out west mm -hmm. and you were using the same pen, and I take it you were using one of that. Okay. Yeah, I, I had right. I okay. had my nano and the same. So nano. how long would it take you to get up on the air? It, it took me just a few minutes to tune it, okay. make sure that it was okay. And that's it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. This is great for antennas that you're setting up. When I set up the one for the VA. That one there was it was out of band, so I didn't really I could I, I could I could use my my C line my Drake C line I could put it in there, but I didn't really want to sit there and transmit all those frequencies. So I used the I used the nano VNA and that thing just it told me exactly where I needed to go left right left right I was adjusting adjusting the length of it you know to where I needed it to be to be able to work on the two bands that we needed. Yeah, you're seeing real time. Yeah. Results. So if you would go through your uh, transmatch there and just turn one of the knobs, you would immediately see what the difference is. Right. So that's one of the things you can do with this. This is really this is really nice. I like this. You can save that trace for comparison if you make an adjustment. Yeah. If you make an adjustment, you can save the trace. You can save it. Um, you were talking about how do I come back and have to recalibrate. This here has four different memories on it. So if you have four different uh, type of setups, if you want to do one for UHF, VHF, and HF, there's four different settings on there. On this, without this, just the standard VNA, uh, mm -hmm. nano VNA by itself, you can tell it to recall those settings and it'll put those into there. So you don't have to recalibrate. You don't have to recalibrate. So that's what I was going to tell you before. That's pretty good. 
Yeah, so it's nice. I never mm -hmm. learned how to do that though. <laughs> yeah, you can save it, you know, and, and, and put it in there. So. so that's really nice that it does that. So let's go now. Let's go now. Um, and so let's go and put this in the middle here. And let's go. This is a uh, forty meter antenna. Yes, I would say. So we'll put we'll set it at forty meters, and we'll run a scan again. And let's take a look and see what happens after we've done this now. Holy smokes, look at that. Oh, wow. Oops. Now oh, look at the scan oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So depending on how on where you have this set depends on where it's going to be. Naturally. They can do all sorts of scans. You can set it up to do repetitive scans. You can have it do uh, multi scans. The difference between, I have it set it at uh, 10 scans. So it's gonna go through the thing 10 times before you do it. And the reason I do that is so that you get the maximum, so you can get the finite amount of frequencies. You could do it at one and it'll do it a lot quicker. And you can. Um, yeah, it's a fixed number of samples for each one of those. Yeah. You use 10 to get 10 times the samples. Yeah. yeah, to ask that question, you say it another way too, is it looks like it's stepping. It's not continuous no, in terms right. of frequency, so it's a sample. It's a sample. Yeah. So it's stepping through there. So let's go, let's uh, move this guy this way. We'll take a little look and see where he is now. Now you'll see. Yeah, see where it is now. Probably. Right down there. So if you bypass that tube and go back where you were, that would get you to one point two. Correct. Yeah. Now I think one thing you have to be very careful is you can't have a transmitter anywhere around the input of that thing. No, you Just can't expect an hour to blow it up. Yeah, you're you're exactly correct. Now the reason I said that is because. Um, some people don't realize when you turn on some transceivers, there's a momentary transmit signal sent out to that transceiver that could destroy that thing. That's why right. Saying, but in this case, you don't need to. You don't need the radio. I, I understand. That. Yeah. But well, since you have it to a transmatch, somebody could inadvertently think, "Oh, well, I could just switch this out of the transmatch and go right to the rig." And it's like, no, yeah, but Joe, who's there with you? Huh? <laughs> Who's there with you? You need to educate them. <laughs> no, but you see what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I know, I know. You need to destroy it that way. That's what. Oh I'm yeah, saying. you yeah, can you get could. attenuator stuff for it, right? Yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah By the way, on that note, where's your? Uh, what I use? What I use a lot. Uh, uh, that one is at uh, six point. Looks like six point two. So you can move it back and forth, however you want. Let's try another one over here. Yeah, you can move this thing anywhere and change that waveform any way you want. The best way to do it when you're doing it this way is to use the uh, the unit here. It'll get you really close when you look at it on the on the actual screen itself. But if you don't have that, no, here. I said, but I don't have one of those. Oh. Yeah, you do oh, right the, here. The you VNA look at it. On, you look at it on there. Yeah. And you actually look at it on the DNA and not. Not this piece. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I never knew about the software until the yeah. you mentioned it. Uh, so the other thing that the other thing that's interesting is go ahead and unplug that guy over there. The other piece that we did was um, I don't know if you saw it over here. Let's go ahead and do a 20 here. So the guys on the uh, guys on the on the uh, that are dialed in. What Wendy has done is she's unplugged the cable and she's leaving it down there on the ground. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sweep. We're going to sweep it from, uh, let's say, one megahertz all the way up to time, which would be uh, 900 megs. Yes, we're done with that.
So we're going to sweep it. We're going to sweep it from one, one uh, megahertz all the way to 900 megahertz. Okay. And we're going to do it 20 times. And we're going to look and see what it says. Ooh, we got pictures. Another Kodak moment. He's sold an I think he wants one. I think he's going to buy one. He's got to buy one. Yeah, he wants one. Mark, another question. Can you can you see that real time when you make a change? You got to keep sweeping every time you make it. No, you can see the real time on the uh, on the VNA itself. And not on the software. Oh, you can make the software do that real time. You just don't want ten samples if you want. To yeah, you got to do it. You got to do maybe it one or two, one or two samples, and then have it keep sweeping. And just keep sweeping. So if you want to uh, attune to a certain frequency using the printer or whatever, can you see yeah. that change? Or... I think it, uh, under sweep sweep settings, you can come in here and go continuous sweep right here, right there, and tell it to sweep all the time. I just didn't do it on this one here. Okay, so this is what we got. There's a little thing in here called time domain reflectometer. What is that again? Time domain reflectometer. Okay. A lot of words. A lot of words. Yeah. A lot of yeah. words. Say that, yeah. Say that real time fast. Okay. And that's going to tell us the cable length. Okay. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate this again for 900 megs because we are going up to 900 megs. So we have this piece of coax hanging out here. We're going to set this so that it's the through, right? And we need to uh, do 900 megs on my. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's see what we get. Because we're calibrated for 12 megs, aren't we? 12 to 29 megs, right. close to approximately. Let's see. You could find basically with, with time domain reflectometry, you can tell exactly within inches where your break is on your coax. Where somebody came and stuck a pin in your coax. Remember that? That used to, that used to be the thing with CB. I'm going to go pin his coax. <laughs> yeah. you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah. I want to go get his yeah. Boy, yeah. Yeah. Or do you want to know? Or do you want to know what kind of coax this is? I got this thing on automatic all the time. Holy shit. And you can get your velocity back for that too. Since I read my, my, my coax from DX engineering, this is off by Amazon. I can tell with the small surface and quality. Okay, so let's go here now. Let's calibrate it up for where we're going to go. And how did we calibrate it? We went to, we put in the frequency that we're going to use, one meg to 900 meg. Then we're going to hit calibration. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to say calibration assistant. You see this in right here where it says load calibration? That's if you save one, you can load it. We could do it that way too. So let's do this one here. And this one here, I believe, says put the short in first. All right, so we're going to put the short guy in first. We're going to calibrate him. I'm going to set this to, well, it's already set it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry, it's going to take a while. Right. It's going to put it at 20. It takes longer to calibrate. I use four or six. I don't you know you can look at the dots and oh, so you have one of these. I have three. You I have, have four. Like yeah, you broke. That's right. You I broke a bunch of them. Now we're gonna put the open on. We're gonna take this off. Put the open in. And 
now it's open. And we're going to hit. I think that you were most out of calibration on these, so did you have to recalibrate them so many times? Say that. Any any idea what those out of calibration that you have to recalibrate them so many times? You really don't need to calibrate it every time. Yeah. I don't know. If you're I don't just know. looking for the dip, yeah. don't worry about calibrating it. It's going to be accurate. If you don't if, keep if your you battery know what charged this, up on it, though, you oh, do that have to. Yeah, that would make sense. There's, there's, an accurate there's a setting in there to, to uh, say the calibration yeah. and push yeah. it down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're going to do load. Where'd my load go? I didn't take it. You didn't take it? No, it's right okay. there. All right. I'll load. Blame me. Put my load in. Is everybody tired now and ready to go home now? It's a long day. And that's going to be very good. How long is the cable? How long is the cable? Oh, come on. Is it telling us? Everybody, everybody, a number and put it in. It's 40 feet. Okay. How long is the cable? What does everybody think this cable is? I said 40 feet. You said 40 feet. How many? 40 guys feet. Looks like all the rest. 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. It's it's wound up. I don't know. Oh, let's see what happens here. We'll go ahead and run this. I don't have much faith in this. I've got a forty foot cable. Looks like a lot like that. Where'd you buy it? Probably online. Well, it's very stiff. Eighteen feet. Twenty feet. Thirty All right. Field day. Who's coming to field day from this group here? Oh, yeah, you One, never, two, I am on three. Sunday. You never talked Sunday. about Mitch, you never Monday. signed up. Yeah, I got oh, that's true. I didn't sign up either. You didn't I'm sign coming up. Either. What is the problem here, guys? Four, four to five. Authority. I asked for us to talk five, about five, it, and we never have. Saturday, four to five on Saturday. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there to help set up and well, hang out. Yeah. Well, it starts at, it it starts at three of the time. Three on Sunday. Anybody have a there at noon? Oh, honey, we're we're going Friday. Yeah, we're yeah. going Friday afternoon. Yeah. So <laughs> it starts on Saturday. Hey, good news is at least there's not going to be any snow on the ground. I right. know. Oh, it's supposed to be a nice this weekend. Is it going to be clear? There was a lot of fun. Right? There was a concert that we should do. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? On Sunday. Well, I'm going to do quite in our off times before we start. That's right. Eagles game, right? Sunday. Yes. Who's bringing stuff? With Go Niners. <laughs> Go Niners. Somebody's not calibrating. <laughs> I think somebody got too much calibration down in Africa. You mind the shit and calibrate it. Right? Hey, I have an idea. Let's hook a look to that tuner. He's got a kilowatt amplifier. It's got to get It's not working. For some you reason, it's not working. Definitely. You know, you Definitely. have a little time delay. Find delay, relectometry. Okay, so yeah, let's. There's a um, button on there somewhere that'll tell you that right away. It'll just give you a number back. Where's yeah, my. Uh, you don't even have that. This is a product of Rockwell Automation. Let's put a term in there. Rockwell Automation. I go to a super. I I was building demonstration of piece But he does such a good reason basically. Oh, that's 21. Rockwell automation. By the way, Chad, did you know that Frank was online? Right, yeah, you don't want to put a 50 on there. So it didn't work. Put my my yeah. antenna way too soon, huh? You what? I said put my antenna way too soon. No, 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 no. You're fine. This is a long. Oh, Chet, did you know what I said? Frank was was actually in in the meeting tonight. Oh, is that right? Frank he, is. He still is. Oh, okay. Hi, Frank. <laughs> he just gave us. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Frank.
Frank, uh, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay. Were you on when we were mentioning about your accomplishment? No. Okay. So, um, Chet bragged on you. Yeah, Chet did. <laughs> okay. Here's the antenna from the VA. Okay. And here's my little coil that I got hooked up here. And here's my guy. It's going to go just like this. Maybe. We'll see what happens here. Is that the one you made for them? Yes. When are you guys going to put it up? They won't, they won't let us put it up. They won't let us put it up. Why? Uh, because they said that uh, there was an issue with um, they only wanted their equipment hooked up to a specified uh, radio antenna that they approved. It's the government. It's the government. No home brew allowed. Is that what So basically, no home brew allowed. Okay, so so do they know what it is that they have to buy? Did you did you advise them what it is that they could buy from from, from wherever? From some commercially built antenna? No, what they said was they were re they were reworking their contract with the company that installed it, and that they were going to repair it. And they were just waiting for the paperwork to come in to be able to pay them to do the work. <laughs> yeah, basically, I'd be retired before this happened. Well, even so if I retired three years from now, it'll still be. <laughs> So, so there's no sense in even trying to, to, to get the volunteer thing going then? No, the volunteer thing is be, will be okay. That will be that will be okay. It's just that we're not going to be able to install this antenna there. Okay. Because... Um, but, but their radio still isn't online. It's still going to take... We won't be able to do anything because their radio is not online. They were looking for volunteers to, re to listen to, on the to receiving the, side. On the receiving side. Effect. Yeah, when I was there the last time yeah. I was there, they uh, I, we were able to talk to somebody on that antenna. It only resonated on one frequency. On one frequency. See, they had the same kind of um, frequencies that we had in Civil Air Patrol because there's certain DOD issued frequencies, and I, it was the same thing. The, the, the radios were programmed to just specific frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. So it's set up at one frequency. They click a button, it goes to another frequency. Yeah. They click a button, it goes to another. So it's channelized yeah. like a movie. Yeah, it's channelized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had we had, we had the HFALE radios. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yep. Okay, so what are we doing now? Um, I was trying to get this other one to work, but I don't know if it will or not. Um, Hold on. LFA Mary. What's that? I'm just looking at that. El Jefe Meredith. Yeah, because he's not El Jefe anymore, so he's El Jefe Meredith. Oh, I see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight, so I don't know how long the cable is. <laughs> <laughs> Darn you, like, wait a minute, we're not going to be able to sleep tonight. Wait a minute. We have an unresolved issue here. <laughs> Morning feet. Morning feet. Now you know. Now you know. Wait a minute. Now you can get to sleep. Um, I thought he was right. <laughs> yeah. Morning feet. I told, 40 I told feet. you. It's a standard uh, HR. I won't believe it until I see it um, on the VNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see the program tell you though. Yeah, it's going to be. So if you hook your VNA, points. Right. <laughs> if you hook your VNA up to it, it rinse the length on the side of the cable. The what now? If you hook your VNA up to it and check the length, it'll print the length on the side of the cable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. See that? You need one. I'm telling you, Chet, you need one. You need one. Okay, so what messed up? Why didn't it tell? Why didn't it run? Uh, you know, I don't know why. I mean, it worked uh, when I had it before. To we'll, we'll play with it down here. We'll play with it out at the uh, at field day. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know why it doesn't do it, but uh, it's like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just keep this little number here on the left. Right? So for those of you who don't know, so this weekend is winter field day. There you go. The, you got it now. The broadcast. Yeah, but it's not. The uh, transmitting time is from 2 p.m. Sunday. It says it's one to foot. 2 p.m. Sunday. <laughs> well, we are yeah, renting the yurt at Lunt Pond. And you're welcome to come down. I told Gavin in an email, come on down, even though he only has his tech license, because we have people who are general or extra class, he'd be able to be on those bands with us and get to see what it's like to be on. Uh, that's HF. HF1 entrance, not the main entrance. You know, it, it's where the campers are. Yeah, the camping entrance. Camping. So camping. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. be very kind of parking. Yeah, yeah. so there's, there's limited parking. Only two vehicles are going to be able to be at the yurt. So everybody, when you come in, drop off your stuff if you're leaving stuff, and then you'll have to park over in the main uh, parking lot area. Yeah. So you're and talking just a couple hundred yards, maybe. We're talking the range just has nothing to do there. So they like yeah. really harass. <laughs> well, there, there's so. there's a resident person who's on the same side of the yurt, but there's somebody who's like living there. I think it's the same crew that was there last year when we were there, and they were parking two vehicles over on that side, and they really shouldn't have been. And I will go to the the rangers and complain They're because probably paying the right people. <laughs> or I don't care, but you know, we're, we're paying. So but come on down and see what it's all about. You did put that. Of course, we'll do it again oh, yeah. in summer field day in, in the summertime. <laughs> oh yeah, even though the meeting is officially over as far as the meeting portion, we need to start thinking about summer field day. I need a coordinator for summer field day. So if I don't have anybody volunteer by February's meeting, I'm drafting somebody. Because I know. <laughs> Joe, why? Oh wait, uh, Mike, are you done? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm done.